I have no doubt that you've used or at least started Word before. What you may not have done, however, is figured out how the program's interface works. It's helpful to know this because the terms related to the interface are used over and over and over again in explaining the ins and outs of Word. On my desktop, you can see that I have an icon for Word. If I double click on this icon, as I will in just a moment, the program will start up. On your system, you may also have a collection of Word documents. If you double click on a document, then Word starts and the document is loaded into the program. I, however, am just going to double click on the Word icon on my desktop. And when I do, I'm brought up to a, uh, an area that allows me to select how I want to start with this version of Word. All I'm going to do is click on this blank document option right here. And when I do, you can see that there's a, a blank document on the screen. In fact, you can see that the majority of the program window is taken up with that document. This document is intentionally designed to resemble a blank sheet of paper. It's where you start typing your next masterpiece. Now, I'm not going to start typing right now, but I do want to draw your attention to one very important item here. Notice that there's a blinking vertical line in this document. Some people refer to that line as the cursor, but that's not technically correct. It is, in Microsoft parlance, referred to as an insertion point. That's because it marks the place where information will be inserted in your document when you start to type. For now, I want to focus on the major elements visible in the program window because understanding these elements is crucial to effectively using Word. I'm going to focus on the ribbon, the quick access toolbar, and the status bar. Word uses what is known as a ribbon-based interface. That's because at the top of the screen you can see an element known as the ribbon. This ribbon is composed of differing tabs and those tabs contain collections of tools that can be used to accomplish related tasks. The biggest struggle you're likely to face in learning how to use Word is figuring out how to locate the tool that you need in order to accomplish whatever task you are faced with. To complicate matters just a bit, the tabs that are visible on the ribbon may vary from time to time. That's because they are contextual in nature. They depend on what you are doing in your document at the current time. I'll give you just a quick example. You can see that the tabs on the ribbon here are File, Home, Insert, etc. If I go ahead and I click on the Insert tab right here, then I can choose to insert a table if I want to. In fact, I could insert lots of things. That's the purpose of the Insert tab. But I'm going to go ahead and click on Table. And now I'm going to choose, I'm going to put a table of this many cells within my document. Now when I do that, you may have noticed that the ribbon changed up at the top of the screen. What happened is, is that Word added a couple of other tabs at the right side of the, uh, of the ribbon. If I move outside of this table area and click somewhere else, those uh, options, those tabs on the ribbon go away. If I click back inside the table, then those tabs come back into play again. As you work with different ribbon tabs, your document is normally still visible. Granted, clicking a particular tool may display a dialog box, a palette, or a drop-down list, but you can still see your document patiently waiting in the program window. There is one ribbon tab, however, that doesn't behave in this way. When you click on the File tab of the ribbon, right over here at the left side of the screen, your document disappears and is completely replaced by what Microsoft euphemistically calls the back office. Now, I'll talk about that in just a minute, but you, may, uh, you, you need to understand that this file tab on some versions of Word may actually be in a different color. That's because it is a special tab that again takes you to that back office area. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and you can see that what it brought up is this area 
again, euphemistically called the back office. Now that term, back office, is actually a cute marketing play as it refers to the fact that Word is part of the office suite of programs. Other programs in that suite are things like Excel and PowerPoint and Access. So this area is the back part of Office, the back office. Since your document disappears when you display the file tab of the ribbon, you need to know how to leave the back office and return to your document. You can do that by either clicking on this arrow, this one right up here above the uh, home selection, or by pressing the escape key. Now I should point out that how the back office area works is going to vary depending upon the version of Word that you have. This whole concept of the admin center that you see on the screen here may not show up on your system. That's because this is something new that Microsoft has added to Office 365 or Microsoft 365. The point though about that I wanna make about the back office is that you need to take some time to explore the various options that are made available through the file tab of the ribbon. It's the gateway to important tasks such as creating and saving new documents, printing your current documents, and configuring how Word works. As you become more and more familiar with Word, you'll find yourself spending a great deal of time in the back office area accessible through the file tab of the ribbon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press the escape key to get back over to our document. You may have noticed that the ribbon area can take quite a bit of screen space. This is particularly true if you're using a small monitor or a monitor with a relatively low resolution. Fortunately, Word allows you to control how the ribbon is displayed. You can minimize the ribbon by using uh, three different techniques that I want to go over here. The first is, is that I can go ahead and press Control plus F1. And when I do, notice that the ribbon collapses up at the top and it's only the tabs that are visible there. I could then go ahead and click on one of those tabs and the ribbon expands again for me to be able to look at. If I press Control plus F1 again, then I can see the full ribbon on the screen all the time. I can also, if I want to, go ahead and right click on any of these tabs up here. It doesn't matter which one. So if I right click on it, you'll see that there's an option here to collapse the ribbon. On some versions of Word, this may say minimize the ribbon. But if you select it, then again, it's minimized on the screen. And if I want to, I can right click again and select that same option again. And now it's expanded. The third way that you can do this is to use this down pointing arrow or this arrow at the very right side of the ribbon. If I click on this, then I can choose how I want the ribbon to be displayed on my system uh, completely. So I can go to show tabs only, or if I wanna go ahead and uh, I can again right click and then choose collapse to bring it back up. So there's three different ways that you can control the display of the ribbon on your screen. Take a look at the upper left corner of the program window and you'll notice a handful of small icons. These are located just above the ribbon area and are collectively known as the quick access toolbar. The purpose of the quick access toolbar is to display the tools that you'll use most frequently when working with your documents. Now the tools that are visible within the Quick Access Toolbar are going to depend upon your version of Word. There may be all sorts of icons that are available here depending on how your system is configured. If you want to control what is displayed on the Quick Access Toolbar, all you got to do is click this down arrow right here at the right side of the Quick Access Toolbar area. And when you do, you can see that there are different tools that are available and you can choose to have them added or taken away from the Quick Access Toolbar. So for instance, if I don't want the new document option available, all I have to do is click on it and notice that it disappeared from the Quick Access Toolbar area. I can click this down arrow again and select it again, and now it's back in the Quick Access Toolbar area. I'll discuss other ways that you can add items to the uh, Quick Access Toolbar later in a different video. 
At the very bottom of the program window is the area known as the status bar. This area runs the entire width of the program window and is typically used to display status information about your document. You can control what is displayed on the status bar by right clicking someplace within the, uh, within the status bar area. Someplace in the middle here is a good choice because there's no uh, icons that are visible here. But if I right click on it, I see a, uh, a fly up menu or a, a, a context menu that says customize status bar. And I can choose any of these items to be displayed in the status bar area if I want to. Or if I select something that already has a check mark next to it, then that item is removed from the status bar. Now there is one other thing on the status bar that I want to show you and that's right over here at the bottom right hand side. This is called the zoom control and it'll come in really handy as you're using Word because sometimes if you have a monitor that has a very high resolution, what you see in the screen here may be a little bit difficult to see. I mean because it'll look really, really tiny. But you can if you want to click on these to display or, or to control the size of what you see on the screen. It doesn't change what the size is if you were to print it out, it only changes the size of the display itself. And you can uh, just drag this if you want to, or you can use these plus and minus arrows that I was using just a moment ago at the, uh, at the sides of the zoom control. But you're gonna wanna use that as a very powerful uh, control that you'll use again and again as you work with Word. If you like this video, I invite you to go ahead and click on the subscribe button just below the video here in YouTube. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting more of these out and you can uh, see different ways that you can use Word on your own system so that you can become more productive. Thanks for joining me today.